Hi, my name's Karen and I'm hoping you're uh, gonna join me so I can show you cream placement um, application, application of your cream makeup, where to place it, where to place contour and why, how to apply color corrector, where and why, um, your main foundation shade, where to put brightener or concealer if you wanna call it that, how to place lip and lip color, uh, cheek colors and things like that. So stick around. Um, if you like this type of video, make sure that you give me a follow. Um, I love to show and share and teach about uh, cream makeup, but also cream makeup for women that are mature. I'm 57 and I found this makeup about four years ago and it's been such a game changer. So I love to share it with you. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is start with contour. Uh, contouring, uh, and we're gonna be finger painting this on so you can see the placement. I usually don't do it that way, but I want you to see the placement and then we'll blend it together. So contour, first place, I'm gonna take some and put it up here on my forehead. Now you want to look at your own forehead and decide um, how far down you wanna place your contour. That's gonna depend on how tall your forehead is and then how far you bring it down on the temples is gonna depend on either how wide your face is from here to here and also if you are starting to kind of hollow out here on your temples, you don't wanna bring contour down too far. Now, contour on your forehead actually is just framing that forehead and it's adding a shadow up here to drop your forehead down. So once we blend all this in, with a brush, it's going to actually make my taller forehead appear much shorter. Can you see that? Just this line. So we're gonna blend it in when we're all done to show you that. Now, next place I contour is the cheekbones. You wanna be careful that you're not contouring too low and not too far down into this part of your face. You really wanna feel where your cheekbones are and then place the contour under or along that cheekbone. So I like to start kind of out here towards the ear and then just bring it down about to the outside of your eye. Can you see where you just see the hint of, the, of it here, but you're not bringing it too far into your mouth. You're not bringing it too low that will pull your face down. You wanna have the contour just enhancing that cheekbone. Okay, so let me do the other side. So I'm feeling for where my cheekbone is. Okay, and then we're just gonna tap, or if I was using a brush, I would be tapping it on with my brush, but I'm showing you placement right now. So here we can see just a bit of the contour as we look forward, but we don't see a ton of it here that's gonna pull this down and it's not coming down this way. All right, next place to contour if you need to is you can contour on your nose. Um, again, you, what we wanna do when we contour our nose is really we're either making the nose look more narrow or more sh or shorter. That's just kind of depends. So if you want your nose to be to look not as long, you can put a little contour underneath the tip of your nose because that adds a shadow, right? Um, if you want your nose to look a little bit more narrow, then the contour is going to go right along the bridge, not on the bridge of your nose, but right where that cartilage starts to roll over so that this part of the nose, the bridge is very light and bright. And then you have a little bit of a shadow here coming along the outer edge of the nose. Okay. Like that gonna make it appear a little bit shorter if you go underneath and a little more narrow if you keep these two lines close together and then a nice line in the middle that's gonna be to brighten. All right, underneath our jawline, we are going to go straight down to add a shadow and then right, not along the side of the face, but you're actually putting it right on your jaw. So right kind of underneath and we will blend that here when we're done, but you can kind of see how I've done that. Um, if you have kind of more of looser gels or, or skin that's starting to fall a bit, don't put contour here, it'll just pull it down more. We can put a little bit under here, right here, a little farther back to add a, enhance a shadow underneath. So we're gonna come down again, right underneath the ear, straight down. Okay, and we'll blend that in when we're done. And then underneath the jawline, stopping about here if you have kind of more of jowls. And a lot of us are starting to do that just because the collagen in our skin is starting to droop a little bit and that's fine, but this is gonna enhance and add a shadow to that to your natural jawline. Okay, so that was contouring, pretty easy, really, really easy. And that's the first thing I would color match you to is a contour shade, um, depending on your hair color, your eye color, your skin tone, and also whether you like light, 
uh, medium or a full coverage. That's all asked of you when you fill out my color match form. Speaking of that, anytime here during this lesson, just comment the word match and I will send you my color match form. It's free, um, it's secure, no one sees it but me. Fill out the information, upload a no makeup selfie that really shows in front of a nice window so I can really see your skin coloring. Um, no lights on above you or behind you and send that to me and I will get back to you with your color match so that you would know what shades. You don't have to figure that out on your own at all. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is this shade here. This is your color corrector shade and I always recommend a color corrector shade whether um, you know, you don't have to get one right away. You can just try a main shade and a brightener to start with your contour, but I like you having that option because a lot of times a color corrector shade can also work um, mixed with your main shade in the summer or when you have more uh, color to your face. You can also use it to help with a lot of different issues from under eye darkness, broken capillaries, rosacea, sunspots, all of that. So I'm gonna start first with addressing um, eyes with this color corrector. And a lot of us have or may start to see bluish purple, discoloration, under eye darkness, even uh, discoloration on our eyelids. Um, this pooling of melasma, see all of that here? So I'm gonna use my color corrector shade again. I would match you to yours. Um, so let me go ahead and tap in. Now this you wanna use a very small amount all of our makeup you do. So first I'm gonna just put a little bit on my eyelids very gently. We'll blend that in later, but that's gonna be to help just filter and kind of even out the, um, the discoloration that is on my eyelids, almost like a primer. Um, and I'm just going to pat that on. And you can see already just that little bit of not even having it blended yet, how that really has filtered that discoloration. Now underneath our eyes sometimes is a little different. Um, sometimes we have a lot of texture. Our under eyes might be very, um, have a lot of you know lines, uh, wrinkles, or a lot of texture, very crepey. So we wanna be careful that we don't just take you know, the full on a whole bunch of this and slide it all underneath. So what I wanna to talk to you about is maybe taking a moisturizer, your eye cream. This is actually a, a sheer balm that I like to use um, from, from, the, from Saint. And I'm just gonna put some on the back of my hand. It's just a sheer, sheer balm, like a little moisturizing balm. And then I'm gonna pick up with my same finger, some of that mango color or my color corrector and I'm just going to mix it together with that balm so it's a little bit more sheer and it's a little it's not as thick when I apply it so I'm going to go back in add a bit more and I'm only going to take and apply it where I have the darkness okay so let me mix that together so I'm tapping it underneath where I see that dark purple I got it here too and then I'm gonna just take my finger and continue to tap and press that underneath the eye. And so it's staying sheer. It's not adding a lot of more texture, but it is helping to filter. Can you see the difference already um, between this eye and over here? So like right in here and even here, okay, and out here where I don't have any yet. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more. So you could do this with a moisturizer and eye cream. Just take a bit and put it on the back of your hand, whatever you want to use for to make this a little bit more sheer, a little bit easier um, to apply to your under eye. And then I'm mixing it here on the back of my hand. And then again, coming in and tapping it, pressing it where I need it. Pick up a little bit more. Okay, and then taking that finger and just tapping and pulling the color across underneath the eye. And if I need more, I'll go tap a little bit more. So building it up is better than applying a ton all at once, um, especially under our eye area. Okay, so we're just going in and then take a look and decide, okay, how did that do? Does it look, do I need any more? Do I need to keep tapping? We're not, you know, we will blend everything when we're done here, but for now, we're just getting the placement. So eyelids, if you need it, under eye with a color corrector shade. Um, then look at your face and decide, are there other areas that have a lot of excess color? So for 
me and a lot of ladies, we might have broken capillaries, these, these like spider veins on our face, these blue, purple, broken. A lot of times they show up on your chin, your nose, across the cheeks. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my color corrector shade and I'm just gonna tap some of that on those areas. And then again, we will be blending when we're all done. Uh, I wake up with a very red nose, so I like to make sure that I have a little bit of extra of the color corrector. Sunspots and age spots, sometimes we need a little extra coverage on those, so I'm just gonna press some of this right on those where I need them. Not a lot, but just kind of look around on your face and decide, you know, where do I need a little extra coverage? Sometimes it might be a, a, a patch of those broken capillaries across the cheeks or some redness, um, purple discoloration. So that's really, really the only places I need that. Okay. All right. So then the next color is your main foundation shade. And this is all matched to you. So the main shade would be the one that matches my skin tone the closest where I don't have any excess color or um, discoloration or, or flare-ups or things going on. So, you know, usually, you know, like up here on my forehead, you know, um, here on the side of my um, jawline. So I'm going to take this color and again, for placement purposes, I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to put some up here and then just kind of dotting some. I would be blending this usually or applying it with a brush, but I want to show you placement. Okay. And I want you to see that I'm not putting it up on top of this. I'm not necessarily layering more on underneath my eyes or where I already have um, some of the makeup, the other color corrector. I'm just gonna tap here and you don't need a lot. That's the thing about uh, doing the placement like this is sometimes we get too much on and you're gonna see that you really, whoops, I think that was the wrong color. Let me tap in here. You're gonna see that you really don't need that much. Uh, of this makeup. A little bit's gonna go such a long way. And so sometimes I feel like when you apply it with your finger, we do ap apply too much, but this is to give you an idea of the placement. All right, so we've done contour, we've done color correcting, okay, concealing, and now we've placed um, the main shade. Now, this next shade here would be what some of you may think of as like, it's it's the lightest shade, right, in my palette. Um, I like to call it a brightener shade. So this is the shade where I may add to areas that I want to pull forward. So if it's gonna be applied to areas that I'm gonna pull forward and add brightness to, um, I don't wanna put it on things that I don't want to be pulled forward. Meaning, I don't wanna put this color directly underneath my eye where I have eye bags, right? So I don't wanna put, the, put it there where I wanna emphasize that. I don't wanna put it where I have a lot of fine lines I don't want to put it there because it'll just look and enhance those. So I'm going to take my pinky and just pick up a tiny bit. One place I want to is I want to put some down the bridge of my nose in between the contour. And that's going to enable my, you know, that kind of enhances the nose for um, the contouring. Um, I don't want to put it right here where I have a lot of texture, but maybe I want some brightness right up here above my brow to add some light. Here on the side of my face, I'm not gonna put it here where I have all of these fine lines, but I wanna have some brightness here. So I may just put a little bit here, okay? To add a, a lift, some brightness. Can you see the placements? Underneath the eye, we talked about we don't wanna place it on the eye bag because that'll make the eye bag look bigger, but where can we brighten? Well, inside along the side of the nose here where the nose casts a shadow and then underneath the eye bag where you actually have like these indentations, you could put a little bit right there under, okay? So inside along the nose where the nose casts a shadow and then under the eye bag where the eye bag is actually casting a shadow or you have those indentations. A Couple other places you can add brighter, brightener is like right at your cupid's bow to pull forward your lip, make it look a little fuller. Sometimes if you have a chin that you want to pull forward um, to enhance, you could put some down here. And then along here, if you feel like your neck and your um, side of your face, maybe there's a disconnect between the color, we can either add bronzer to warm up the neck to match the face, or we can add a brightener to have the face match a lighter neck, okay? Does that make sense? So I'm not gonna do either right now. All right, so speaking of bronzer, 
Where does bronzer go? Well, bronzer is a little bit different than contour. Bronzer actually hits the places of your face that are um, where the sun would naturally hit to warm you up. So again, we're doing placement right now. I know this looks bananas, but this is a cream bronzer. And I would also match you to a bronzer as well. So usually the, your, the sun hits the side of our face on our temples, kind of up in here. So this is kind of mixing a little bit, but that's okay. So almost kind of like in this C shape, coming around the side of our face. Sometimes, you know, like on your nose, definitely a lot of times you might wanna put some bronzer down on your neck and blend that down so that you have warming up your neck and your chest compared to your face if you need to. Okay, so bronzer right here. Then we've got um, our lip and our cheek colors, right? So these are cream lip and cheek. They come in so many different shades, so many different combinations of either a glossy, like this one is a gloss, or more of a satin finish. So I'm just going to take this one here with my finger for placement again, and I'm going to place my blush kind of right in between my contour and this brightener here. So I start by, because I want more of a lifted blush, I'm gonna come straight down outside of my eye and just place it right there. And then right above my contour, I'm just gonna dot that towards the back, okay? So using your eye as a guide and then where your contour is, and then just place it right between. And again, usually we're blending all of this with a brush, but for placement, I want you to see how this all kind of lays out on your face. Lip, cool, cream, cream lip and cheek. You can use it as lip color and as blush. So versatile, right? Okay, so now that we have everything placed on our face, okay, we have done that. And um, if you, like to see or want to know what your colors are, make sure you comment match so that I can get a, a color match form sent out to you. And what I'll do then is I'll help you determine what your contour is, what your color corrector shade would be, what your main shade is, what your brightener shade. I suggest a bronzer because um, I really think as we uh, get older, having warmth to our skin makes our skin look so glowy and adds such a beautiful, just youthful, refreshed look to our skin and then lip and cheek colors you know there's a lot of options so I'll suggest some but then you can decide what you like as well all right so let's go ahead now and grab a brush so uh, the brushes you use are also really important because these brushes are made to work with cream makeup okay and the reason why all of this isn't going to muddle together and look like mud <laughs> is because of the brushes so make sure that you are using um, and getting the brushes that are suggested to you when you get your color match. That's really, really important um, because it makes a difference. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to blend. And just to make it easy, we're gonna try to blend kind of the lighter colors first. So starting kind of where the lighter colors are and we're just tapping. And I'm just kind of tapping. The light, I'm just taking the brush and where the areas are a little bit smaller, I can pinch the brush just to make it a bit smaller. And I'm just pressing and tapping over that lightest color first. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of blend from light to dark. Usually, you don't have to do it like this. Usually, you would just be able to blend and apply with the brush as you go, but I'm showing you placement. So here we go. We did that. Now, next, we're going to go ahead and stipple and pounce the main shade. We had some underneath our eye and I wanna go over my eyelid where I had that color corrector and I just wanna press and blend that in. So I'm just doing, it's very such a soft brush. Can you see already how that's blending together? So pretty. So let's come up here on the forehead. Okay, and we have some of our main shade over here on the side of our jawline. Then down here on the chin, we can blend these together over my lip. <laughs> and then over here. So really to blend, I'm just stippling and pouncing. And usually when I teach my tutorials and uh, when you order from me, I send you a beginner tutorial and I actually send you a face map that shows you all the placement on your face. 
So it's the picture of you with your colors placed, which is so great. So we're just pouncing, okay, to blend. Now let's go ahead and go up here into the bronzer and then up across where that bronzer was. And then we're gonna move up here into the contour, pull it up towards your hairline. And I'm just doing this pouncing motion. That's really is how we blend. And we have to make, and you see that I'm not, it's not muddling together, right? Cream and cream, cream loves to mix with cream. It really does. And it doesn't turn to mud. It stays nice and separate, but it blends together seamlessly. I know people are always like, I don't understand how you can just use one brush and you don't have to clean the brush off. It's because of the brush we're using and we're using really highly pigmented cream makeup that sits on top of your skin so you're able to blend it. So can you see how that just softened and blended and we've got some warmth and we've got the contour up on our forehead and then here we are on the side of our face again. I'm gonna come over and now I'm going to blend pinch it a little bit. I'm going to take my blush and just kind of blend the blush first up back towards my temple. And then I'm just going to take where the contour is and just take the brush and just pounce so that it softens it a bit, kind of works it in with the blush, but it doesn't lose. I don't completely blend it out because I still want to have to see the shadow there. Okay, so let's do the blush again. And, you know, make sure you watch some of my other videos on how I apply the makeup without having to do it this way. But this is a, this, you know, you can do it this way as well. There's lots of different ways. So we're just tapping and then go over. We don't, we're not swiping. That's really important as well. When you are using um, or have more mature skin, you definitely don't want to swipe this makeup on. Um, you want to use the stippling or pouncing motion. Because one, it really gets it into all of your fine lines. It makes it very skin-like. Can you see that? Um, you're not removing makeup underneath that you have placed. All right, let's go down here and do our jaw. So the jawline, you're gonna blend the contour down. Okay, so contour on your cheeks goes up hairline up, contour, but down here on your jawline and underneath your neck, the contour gets blended down. And then I'm mixing it in with some bronzer that I had on my neck. Make sure I get all that blended. I kind of went a little heavy, but that's okay. We'll just keep blending and pull it down. Of course, my neck is turning all red. <laughs> Do you have one of those necks or chests that turn red when you touch it? that we can pull it down here and it's so sheer, the bronzer is so sheer that we can really just keep pulling that down and blending it. I don't know if that is a mole, probably. <laughs> Lots of moles, okay. Okay, so we have all of that blended in, ready, good, good, good. Now when you're all done applying your makeup, you then want to take your um, setting spray because the makeup sits on top of your face and you wanna set your makeup with setting spray. So um, shake it up really well so that it builds up some pressure and you're just gonna spray your face liberally and that helps set the makeup for the day because it's sitting on top of your skin. It's gonna move with your face. It's not gonna um, look cakey. It's not gonna look, um, you know, it's not gonna do that. What it, what, what like some liquid and powder makeups tend to do sometimes is after you put them on, they set down so much or evaporate or dry in so much that later throughout the day when you're actually talking and moving your face and smiling and <laughs> everything, the makeup tends to really separate and, and kind of almost crack out and just emphasizes everything where if you look here, my face looks very skin like, um, it is very, uh, glowy, very dewy, but it's not sticky. It's not heavy. It's very light, right? You can still see a lot of my skin coming through. Um, it's buildable. So if you wanted to add more blush at this point, let's say I wanted to go in and I wanted a little bit more color, I can just take my brush right into my blush and come in and just apply a bit more if I want to, right? Sometimes you want to build that up or, we, or you want more. 
So I'm just gonna add a bit more blush. Let's say when you were all done, you're like, you know, I really think I even want a bit more bronzer. I really wanna warm up um, with bronzer. So you can take this end of the brush we were using and just swirl into a bit of that bronzer and come in and you can just lightly, very lightly, not really a swiping so much, but just kind of a light feather dusting of a bit of the bronzer right here in the center, down our temples, like we talked about where the sun would naturally kind of warm us up. See how pretty that is, how that really warms up your skin. And if I needed some more down here, you know, to just kind of tie in what I had down here. And really it's just such a light amount that it's no different than, you know, putting a lotion on that has a little color to it. It's just not going to make a difference. It's not going to get all over everything. It really isn't. So um, what else can you do with this makeup? Well, my full face right here. That's it, right? Okay. And then later, if you want to, you can get other lip and cheek colors. Um, you can set your eyes. So I have cream. I could do my eyes. Um, let's set my eyelids with a little bit of translucent setting powder. So I had color corrected right and kind of neutralized my eyelids out when we started with my color corrector shade but now i want to set that and go in and maybe put some color and you can get eyeshadows that go right inside your palette let me just add a really pretty soft kind of corally pink shade to my lid just for a little little quick color here and lots of great brushes. All the brushes are made to work with the makeup. So again, it's important to, you know, get the makeup um, and get the tools and the brushes that actually work with it. So here I'm taking a little shimmer and just tapping that on the center of my lid with my finger. Just look at how pretty and simple that is. Everything that I just needed right here um, in this one palette. So this is something you can do and get yourself and I think you should. So comment the word match if you haven't been color matched and you're interested in this cream makeup. It's all contouring and highlighting. It's all cream. Our eyeshadows are powders, but they're beautifully pigmented powders. You see how rich they are. Um, it's all pigment, barely any filler, so you don't have that fallout. You don't have that, um, you know, just sketchy kind of flaky <laughs> where the color just doesn't sit nice it just lasts all day on your eyes it's so beautiful and um yeah everything you need i hope that was fun i hope the placement of it showing you how you can place it uh made sense and again make sure that you comment match so that i can get you the right brushes for the type of application you like whether it's light medium or full coverage you fill out my form and so I know your skin tone and I can help you choose all of your makeup here, all in one palette. And it's something that you, before the new year, it's something you need to do. If you're not happy with your current makeup, don't wait any longer. Don't wait another year. Don't keep trying to work with the makeup you've used, you know, for the last couple decades. It's time to update that makeup and try something new. You deserve it. We deserve it. And I hope this was really helpful. So thanks so much for watching again. My name's Karen. Give me a follow if this was helpful and make sure you comment match so I can help you get started with your own 3D palette. Thanks again. Bye.